BitWit's coverage of Computex 2019 is brought to you by Fantex, Cooler Master, Gigabyte, Enermax, Team Group, NZXT, and Corsair. To learn more about our sponsors, click on the links below. We're at the Gigabyte booth. Gigabyte booth. Say hi. Wave hi. You look really weird. You look, you look so awkward. What a, what a little weirdo. All right, so uh, this is an X570 motherboard. This is the thing I'm most excited to talk about here at Computex 2019 is all the X570 goodness, this new platform from AMD featuring their new Ryzen 3000 series processors. There's actually a Ryzen 3rd Gen uh, Zen 2 chip underneath this big cooler here, but they won't tell me what kind it is. I'm wondering if it's a 16 core, that'd be pretty awesome. Uh, but since we can't talk about that right now, let's talk about the thing underneath it, which is a PCI Express M.2 NVMe expansion card. If I could just focus. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Sorry, it's super reflective. I can't remove this stupid acrylic panel. Uh, so basically we've got four M.2 NVMe slots, all right, that support PCIe Gen 4. So that gives us an incredible amount of bandwidth that is getting us 15,000 megabits per second read and write, approximately, which is absolutely insane. Now they actually tested this with four populated drives on an Intel platform Z390 board, and it only recognizes two of the drives because there's just simply not enough bandwidth with PCIe Gen 3. This is really where, where it's at. I mean, AMD did some demos with graphics cards showing you know, the, the bandwidth that's uh, available on PCIe Gen 4, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense right now because even PCIe Gen 3 isn't being fully saturated by most GPUs these days. On the other hand, NVMe drive can certainly take advantage of that extra headroom. Uh, additionally, it's also worth noting that you can do up to eight terabytes of storage total. So they have four two terabyte drives populating this guy right now, which is oh, insane. And I like the back plate too, that's cool. It's a bit more of an extreme solution, of course. So if you're a bit more reasonable uh, or have a more limited budget like myself, we have a single SSD right there. And NVMe, uh, that's the Aorus NVMe Gen 4 SSD, two terabyte drive, nice big copper heat sink for thermal connectivity goodness. And even with that single drive, we're still getting a very respectable five gigabytes read and write, or five gigabytes read, and about 4,200 megabits per second right. Jeez. Okay, now we're gonna do X570 boards here. This is, this is the BZs right here. This is the X570 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi Mini ITX. Right now, only Gigabyte and Asus are making X570 boards in this form factor, uh, mainly because the X570 chipset gets so friggin' hot, it's kind of hard to cool it on, a, on such a small surface area like this. But, by God, they've done it. Look at that little fan, so cute. They've got two layer design here. This is actually completely metal. I thought this was plastic at first, but that's just for uh, extra heat dissipation. Uh, that's actually coming straight from where the MOSFETs are. So this whole thing is designed to keep the X570 chipset cool. Uh, and apparently, according to Gigabyte, it's doing a bang up job. Uh, we also have two dim slots right there, DDR4, which can get uh, much higher speeds than we saw on X470 and uh, lots of connectivity. This is a fully featured board. Apparently, big things do come in small packages. And look at the IO here, rear IO. We actually have plenty of USB 3, USB 3.1, Gen 2 Type-C, Wi-Fi on board, very essential for a mini ITX board, uh, dual HDMI and display port out, and I believe that's uh, gigabit ethernet LAN. Don't quote me on that though. These are more of the mid-range boards, uh, X570 Aorus Pro, we've got the X570 Aorus Ultra, and uh, the Aorus Master. Okay, the Master being the higher end one of the three. Now you're pretty much gonna scale upwards uh, in terms of feature sets, and maybe uh, a bit more flair when it comes to RGB lighting. I'm not gonna focus too much on these boards, uh, but the one that I, that I really did wanna uh, drive home is this guy, the X570 Aorus Extreme. This is the very first time that Intel's actually bringing the Extreme line of their motherboards to AMD. This has previously been reserved for Intel, uh, but this board is absolutely insane. It's completely over-engineered. You can see all of the cover plates that are on this thing are completely metallic. They're, actually, there's no plastic on this thing pretty much whatsoever. And it's actually a functional purpose, uh, although it does look very nice. It's actually helping to keep the X570 chipset cool. And what's very special about this board is that since it's using heat sinks as opposed to fans, it doesn't have any active cooling. This is completely passive. And you know, uh, like, like pretty much any fan, they're eventually going to fail at some point. So this just kind of guarantees uh, the, the longevity of the board overall, uh, excellent cooling. They've even thrown in a full-blown backplate on this thing. Oh, I forgot to mention, there's actually a backplate on the, uh, the Mini ITX board too. Um, I'm sure Chris will get a B-roll shot of that. Uh, but uh, we have a very nice uh, fin stack here. This is actually a true heat sink, not just some frilly, frilly fancy looking thing that looks cool. RGB right there, I think. Is that RGB? No, that's actually just, uh, that's actually just a weird design. Okay, never mind. I actually kind of like the blacked out stealth look. Why are you shaking your head? I see you, I see you lurking. I see you lurking. Oh, Pedro's shaking his head. Hey, hey, Pedro. <laughs> hey, hi, Pedro. If you guys uh, follow the uh, PC Master Race subreddit, he is the, he's, he's the owner, he's the moderator. He, he created, he, you invented the PC Master Race. <laughs> can, can I just shake your hand really quick? 
It's all right. It's a left-handed shake because I'm vlogging with my right. I love you, Pedro. Stay cool. Everyone go follow the PC Master Ace subreddit. Uh, so basically, this board is extremely insane. I have no idea what the price point it's going to be, uh, but it's going to be obviously more than these boards, and uh, not for the faint of heart, but incredibly over-engineered. Also, these boards are featuring full 16-phase power. Okay, There's no doublers here, uh, like, like you see on competing boards, so we're actually getting a true 16-phase power design board uh, that's going to be exceptional for, for overclocking uh, and uh, enthusiasts all around. Also, the I.O. is... Oh my god, it's a lot of I.O. Okay, you can just look at it. I'm not going to talk about it. Just there. That's, that's a lot. All right, last thing about this board, and I'll shut up. Look at the ports. Look at the ports on the side. Okay, they're all right angle. Okay, very clean. Uh, it's going to be great for cable management, and I love the fact that the actual heat sink is covering it up completely, uh, which uh, I would love to see this board installed in the full system to just to see how effective this, uh, this cable routing strategy is. But very promising so far. Okay, well, there's a lot of other technology here at the Gigabyte Suite, but uh, none of it contains AMD X570, so it doesn't really interest me. All right, let's go.